it's a lot of work, this van conversion. <laughs> I am feeling totally fed up at this exact moment. Um, this is the worst part in any build, I think, this junction. Slowly, the bus is getting there. But man, is it soul destroying in the process. By this point in the story, I had been living side by side with my bestie, Leah, for over two years. And most of that time was side by side in the tiniest of tiny homes. But now I wasn't living in a tiny home. I was back in my childhood home on the British island of Jersey. And I wasn't with Leah. She had recently left to go back to Australia. I'm still hopeful that she'll return, but that can't be until this combi is ready for the road. So in the meantime, I have to transform our 1973 Volkswagen Combi Boomerang into an off-grid tiny home. Let's get to it. These two hookups on the side of our Combi will help us recharge from the grid when our solar can't keep up and allow us to fill our extra water tanks so we can extend our stays off-grid. It was kind of therapeutic getting my head down and working on my own project, but for sure I was missing Leah's help. Luckily, I had my father and mother close at hand to help with the project. Keep pulling. Yeah. A bit more. Yeah, you got it. Amateur woodworking tip number one. I am not a pro at uh, woodworking, so I don't know what this is gonna turn out like. I'm telling you that for two reasons. One, so all of you that are pros uh, won't judge me and two so any of you that are in the same boat as me and don't know how to make things out of wood will be encouraged by hopefully what will be an awesome ban in the end but one little tip i always think it's best to cut the piece of wood that you care least about first because you're bound to make a huge donkey's ass out of it so i'm cutting the piece of wood that goes on the back here i could just um screw a bunch of stuff into this metal here but this is where all the electrics are going to live in the house so I, I want the wood to provide a bit of a cushion between uh, the metal vibration and um, the sensitive electronics and also behind here is the gas tank so that doesn't give a lot of room to um, screw into so i'm going to put a crappy piece of wood up there and then put carpet over it and that will Help me um, pop my woodworking cherry. It's been a long, long time since I've been working on wood. Please don't judge my lack of carpentry skills. Practice makes perfect, and I promise it will turn out good. It's probably for the best that Boomerang's fate is not entirely in my hands alone. Before Leah had left last month, she'd come up with the idea of making some insulated window covers. We're actually using some um, insulation, this radiant insulation that's used in attics. It's, Ben's dad had a, a lot of rolls of these spare, so we're going to use this. Um, you can also use Reflectix or Thinsulate, it's probably better. And we're going to thin this down a bit too because it's a bit thick for us to use um, for the windows. It is really good at keeping out the heat and keeping the warmth in. Whilst Leah is in Australia, my mum is taking the role of head seamstress and hand stitching our excess roof insulation into these very fancy magnetic insulated window covers. So we've got um, nine magnets in here, one in each corner and they're on 
three on the top because of the weight of it. But the thermal side should act as a reflective heat thing as well as hopefully keeping you warm and cool. This is going to be a steep learning curve for me and I'm trying to learn from previous mistakes and do everything right, but it's slow progress. Of course, things would be a lot quicker if he only had to do them once. Would you believe that it was only a few months earlier that we'd already had these windows out whilst we were tackling the exterior restoration back in California? Flipping heck. Crappy aftermarket windows. We tried to reuse the old seals because we can't get them anymore. Um, it was the best option we had at the time when we did the bodywork, but unfortunately they leaked pretty bad. So um, we have to try to make do with some other aftermarket seals and see if we can make them a little bit better before we put all the cabinetry in and it starts uh, leaking and being a nightmare. So better take care of it now. British fish and chips, full of fat, bad things for you, <laughs> and absolutely delicious. We've got this access hatch smack bang in the middle of the floor in the combi. Um, I assume that it was for rear heating um, and I've been thinking what can we use it for because it's kind of useful. Uh, maybe we could put a toilet there or something. Just peeing straight out of the combi into a little bottle at the bottom would be quite handy. I don't think Lee is going to appreciate that though. Can I get away with this? Probably not. Whilst the combi is still bare and stripped naked, we have our last opportunity to improve the audio quality in the bus with this final step of sound deadening. Six months earlier in the series when Leah and I were working on our dusty desert bus, we installed fat matte sound deadening on all of the exposed metal surfaces around the engine bay. It's already made a huge difference, but now we're finishing the job inside with this sound deadening carpet from Wolfsburg West. And it does a great job of keeping the noise down over our rear mounted engine. And as a bonus, it will also act as a quality insulation under our future bed. I'm trying to, while Ben is busy on the, on the build, he's been asking me to look at things to buy for the for the van so he doesn't have to spend hours trying to search for products and I'm struggling a bit to find any products that are going to uh, ship to Jersey. I can't find anything. They all don't post to the Channel Islands so there is no way to get these products to him. I can't believe it. Like, <laughs> After spending so much time in America where you can get absolutely anything online and basically brought to you the next day. Uh, this is a big shock and I don't know what to do. I'm looking for carpet lining for the inside of the van and everywhere it just doesn't post the Channel Islands. I found one carpet lining and it doesn't have much information about the product um, but it says it's carpet lining. Uh, that's the only one that's, that will post to Jersey, even though there are some better products out there that I would like to buy, but uh, I just won't be able to get it there. So I'm just going to have to go for this carpet lining and hopefully it's going to be an okay product, a good product. Sorry, Ben. <laughs> hopefully it, it will work. Mom, can we weigh this? Yes. I think it's too heavy. Oh. oh my word. I know. 
This is the carpet that we have for like the uh, bottom of the shelves and underneath the bed and that kind of stuff, you know, just to kind of hide away the dirty metal. But it's turned up and it's way heavier than I, I thought it was going to be. They said that it would be 10 kilograms. Ugh, it's not flipping 10. Oh my God. They lied so they could get cheap postage. It is 26 kilograms. Whoops. Shit. This definitely would have been your job, Leah. You'd have been way better at it. I think I just cut it wrong. That's why they say measure twice and cut once. I am feeling totally fed up at this exact moment. Um, this is the worst part in any build, I think, this junction. There seems to be very little progress. Um, all of the kind of preparation for the build to come has been taking up a lot of time with the cabling and, you know, painting and getting all of the, like, the base vehicle prepared to then build up from and um, it's just crushingly slow to see zero progress and all of the effort goes into those tiny details. But gradually they do all add up and slowly the bus is getting there. But man, is it soul destroying in the process. This reminds me of um, being in Chile uh, when I was building my previous van, Capito and the owner of the house where I was staying, the, the father, he said to me, Oye chico, que estas pensando? Estas perdiendo todo tu tiempo, jalando cables. Tiene que hacer la madera, la, los muebles. Chico, ay, ay, ay. Of course, at the time, I had no idea what he was saying at all, but um, he's right. It, like, I was just spending all that time doing cables and preparing the vehicle. And then after that, it came together relatively quickly so i'm taking a little bit of um strength from that previous experience although this build is significantly more complicated i dealt with this difficult time the way that most brits do first of all nothing like having lovely warm crumpets and a cup of lovely english tea one of the biggest advantages of being at home is that i have this combination of amazing things which only happens on this island. Yorkshire gold tea, is there a better tea in the planet? And Jersey milk. Oh, this is some good stuff. Okie dokie. <sighs> tea, it's saving me. So I'm getting ready to put the insulation in the high top. I have gone around and put sticky tape where I want to put struts so that I can put the insulation onto those struts because unlike other people who tend to put um, kind of board insulation, I am putting um, radiant heat style insulation that goes in attics in houses because it's what we have. It's very effective. It blocks 97% of heat and um, it takes up less space. And as you can see, I already don't have that much standing room. In fact, my head does touch the floor, the roof, when my feet are on the floor. And we don't have our flooring yet, and we don't have our ceiling, so I don't want to put like an inch of insulation up there. But I think it's going to be just fine. The thing that most people don't understand about reflective uh, insulation like Reflectix, or the awesome one that we're going to be using, is that you need an air gap. A lot of people just stick this silver foily stuff straight to the surfaces of their houses and um, vans. And it just doesn't work like that. If you don't have the air gap, it can actually um, do more harm than good and can conduct heat through from the outside. So that's not good. You need an air gap. You need at least three quarters of an inch. So I am putting these struts around in various places so that I can staple the foil insulation and it will have a gap off of the fiberglass roof. And then it should be nice and toasty and or cool. I'm more worried about it staying cool than I am it's getting uh, not too cold in here. Because we are going to be going to some pretty hot places. <laughs> And 
doing as much of this build with reclaimed wood as possible. A lot of this wood was um, taken from building sites that was left over, it was about to be burnt. So uh, it's a mixture. Um, some of it is kind of treated for outdoor use and it's got kind of that uh, greeny tinge. So that will last a lot better than the other stuff, which is just kind of like pine um, and needs to be varnished. So I'm varnishing it with super yacht varnish uh, to basically protect it because it's going to be behind the ceiling. I'd never really want to get to this again. So I don't really want it to get rotten. If a job's worth doing, it is worth doing well. <laughs> It's a lot of work, this van conversion. Even though Leah is not here, I've still had some good help from my family. Um, I'm really blessed to have their support in what I'm doing and to have them actually putting hands on with the project. It's been really fun working with my mum and my dad. Um, you know, getting to spend some quality time with them before we take off on this huge adventure, which we don't know how long that will take. And, you know, the end destination is Australia, which is literally the other side of the planet from where I'm from. So um, I don't know how long I'm going to be away from home for this time. But the last time I left on a big trip, it was about 10 years. So it could be a while. I'm glad that we're getting to spend this quality time and build these memories and experiences together now because uh, really family is the most important thing. It's only the people that you love and that love you back that really matters in this life, you know? It's not about travel and, and experiences and, you know, on the road. Like, that's great. That's those accents of um, enjoyment and fulfillment in your life, but it's not what defines your life. So um, I'm going to miss them and I'm glad that we've had this chance to bond over these kind of experiences because that's something that a lot of people don't get at all. So I'm very lucky. Unfortunately, my luck was about to change. This combi is not done with revealing unwanted surprises and the next one would be a real shock. It was so bad that it threw the whole project into doubt. Our combi was coming apart before our very eyes. But that is a story for next time. Thank you so much for watching. If you're new here, we highly recommend that you subscribe for the series and between you and us, we're creating a really cool and very unique adventure docu-series. So you can join us on the ride from your home as we cross the planet together. We'd love you to be a part of it. If you haven't seen all of the episodes in this bingeable series, we'll link them on the screen now. And for those of you who are channel members and patrons, you can click the Combi Crew icon to access over 150 unlisted posts with more coming every month. And also you can add your own locations to our interactive Combi Crew map so that we can meet up when we come through your town. You can join the Combi Crew and help us create this series from as little as two bucks per month. Even if you join for a month to see what it's all about, we'd really appreciate it. Cheers, guys.